And hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. In this video, which is going to be quite detailed and maybe a little bit long, but bear with me because this is a very important subject. I'm going to try to show you how to avoid a rather gravid mistake that if you refill will give you huge headaches down the road. Now in the old days, I notice I have a big outline here so that I can keep track of what I am supposed to talk about. In the olden days, printers only had four colors. CMYK was CMYK. So you would have to, on purpose, literally, put the wrong cartridge in the wrong slot. Get the idea? See where I'm trying to lead you to? So back then, at least the cartridges were labeled, and you should be able to not put a yellow in a black slot or a magenta in a cyan slot and vice versa. So how would you know if you stuck a color in the slot that wasn't for that color? Well, you didn't. There was no chip. There was no keyway on the cartridge. You could physically, purposely, or accidentally put the wrong color in the wrong slot. Soon after that, chips became available and cards became a little bit more smarter, if you will. Though the numbers increased in colors, printers became six color printers, enter some of the Epson printers with eight, nine, well, actually seven, eight, and nine colors, things got a little bit more difficult. At that point, keyways had to be incorporated in the cartridges. Otherwise, you could indeed create a problem by sticking the wrong color in the wrong slot. Also, chips became the norm, and the chip would recognize that you literally stuck the wrong color in the wrong slot. That chip would be read as yellow, but read by what? A black chip reader. And they would say, listen, mister or ma'am, you stuck the wrong color in the wrong slot. Please remove it, put it back in the correct slot. And that will prevent you from having any mishaps. But then what happens? These printers became a little bit more sophisticated, like I said, with many colors. And then you started having magenta and light magenta, which is a lighter, physically a lighter version of the full strength magenta, as well as the cyan, light cyan. And guess what? Even blacks. Black became dark gray, gray, light gray, or light gray and light, light gray. Whatever the case was, you now had lots of new options to make mistakes with. And again, if you just stick to OEM inks and never, never, ever refill, you probably would not have a problem because the cartridges would be keyed. They could not physically be put in the wrong slot. The chip, even if you were to remove the keys, the chip would be recognized as the wrong color. So a couple of safeguards had been introduced here. And that should keep you safe. But now we begin to refill. And there are tons and tons of people refilling nowadays. And many variations of refillable cars. I just showed you a few of them. But fortunately or unfortunately, whichever way you look at it, we can now fill many of the Canon cartridges. And here's a CLI 42, CLI 72 for a Pro 100 and a Pro 10. Those two cartridges can be reset, right? So they are reset, the levels are brought to full, you refill them and you pop them in the printer and everything is fine. But here's what can happen. And this is the reason for this video. Even though the chip will report that you inserted that cartridge in the wrong slot, if the cart had, for instance, no keyway to double protect you, once you start refilling, no one is controlling what you fill those cartridges with. When you have light magenta, light cyan, cyan, black, gray, 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 you could make a grave mistake while you're refilling and put the wrong magenta in the wrong cartridge. The printer has no clue you did that, okay? If you were to do that, for instance, you flip the magentas, put the full strength magenta where the light magenta should be, 
or the light magenta, where the full strength magenta should be, you will have pretty much immediate color problems on the Pro 100 and the Pro 10 because those cartridges right on the printhead, after the installation of these newly refilled cartridges, the printer will run an ink purge. The previous ink that was present inside the printhead will be expelled and it will be loaded with whatever ink you erroneously loaded your cartridges with. You flip your grays around, you'll have problems. You flip your magentas and your cyans around, you'll have problems. What about matte black and photo black? That can happen as well. You could mistakenly flip those two colors, put black matte in the photo black card and put photo black ink in the matte black card. You will have problems that you will immediately be able to see on your very first print. Well, what do you do to solve that? On the Pro 100 and the Pro 10, easy. Once you realize what you did, open up the printer lid again, remove the offending cartridges. How do you know which ones you screwed up on? If it's a cyan that you flipped, you will have tremendous change on your cyan using shades of your image. Okay, you will have a huge effect. All of a sudden, it was fine, it's bad now. If you have a magenta shift, then you know that you messed up the magenta. If you have weird effect on the blacks, on the shadow graduations, then you know you messed up either on the blacks or on the grays. So you remove those cartridges. And I hope, I hope that you have spares sitting around on the aisles waiting to be used. You pop those back in because you're not gonna have time to flush all those cartridges you messed up on. It takes a couple of days to do this whole process. You better have spares. You pop them in, you run that ink purge, you test the printer again, and lo and behold, everything is back to perfect, okay? Ah, uh, but here's a big problem. Here's why I'm doing this video. What if you do that on the Pro 1 or the Pro 1000 or the P800 or the P600, 3880, 3800, for those of you who still have that fine printer, those printers have stationary carts. Do you realize how much ink it takes before you even see any change in your color rendition? A ton, a ton of ink. When you initiate those printers, you realize your ink drops to 50%. That's how much ink has to pass through. And it's not like a little wall and you have the wrong ink here, the good ink here, and it all flows perfectly evenly. No, 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 it starts to intermix itself it'll take you forever it is a total nightmare to have to reflush a pro one and a bigger triple nightmare to have to reflush this girl right here p800 the same thing and the other ones that i mentioned equally bad so you want to be extra extra careful how do you avoid that how do you avoid that well you might say well just be careful well you know what all of us try to be careful but uh, sometime down the road we will all make that same mistake. Why? Right here, I've made that mistake. And luckily it was on a printer that I can just immediately fix the problem by just switching the carts with a correctly filled one. One cleaning cycle, done. Then I flush the other one at my leisure and make sure that I fill it with the correct colors the next time. Now, what can you do in your workflow to avoid doing this problem, the mistake? Here, I don't know if you can see this, but just recently my Pro 10 required pretty much a top off of all of the cartridges. I opened the lid, I pressed the button to allow the printhead to go to the center. I began with the chroma optimizer, which is the liquid with no color. You should always start with that one. I actually topped off all 10 carts at once. Why did I do that? Why didn't I just do like I always say, and swap a complete set of cards because unfortunately I only have one set of cards loaded with Precision Color Signature Edition, okay? I use OEM Chrome Optimizer and I use OEM Red. The rest is Signature Edition. I did not line them up like you see here, okay? I did not do that. I had them in the box. When I removed the Chrome Optimizer cartridge, I reset it, I look, over to the box, I pulled out my Chroma Optimizer. I made sure that it was Chroma Optimizer. I made sure that I had the Chroma Optimizer card. Checked it again and checked it again. Yes, three times. 
and then I filled it and I popped it back in the printer. The next color was yellow. I did the same thing, walked over to the box, brought out the yellow bottle, looked at the cartridge, yes, it said yellow, looked at the bottle, yes, it said yellow, checked again and checked again, and then I refilled it and so on down the line. The mistakes will come here, the mistakes will come here, and the mistakes will come down here with your blacks as well because you could accidentally flip them. The Pro 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So only one gray. You don't have a lot of room to make mistake with gray on the 10, but you could possibly put gray in your photo black card. You never know. You just never know. So rather than line them all up on a table, line up all your cards on a table and start haphazardly refilling cartridges, don't do that one at a time. Take as long a time as you need to, to refill those cartridges. Now I could do it really quick. And I had all 10 of them topped off before the printhead wanted to move over to the right because you only have so many minutes to do this function. When you're doing this, hopefully you will have two sets, one in the printer full and reset, ready to go. And the other one is the one you removed that was partially empty, either one of them empty and the rest at different levels. And now you're gonna reset them and refill them. So go ahead and reset them all, okay? But do not put them all on the same table among all your bottles. I don't care if you line them up, you will still make a mistake, possibly. One at a time, get your bottle, get your cartridge, bring it over to a neutral point in your work table, look at them and then proceed after you have verified, verified, verified that you do not have the wrong shade of cyan or wrong shade of magenta or the wrong shade of gray or the wrong black. So very, very easy to mess up. Everyone says, oh, I will never have that problem. I'm a careful refiller. Well, just the other day, someone bought Precision Colors inks for the Pro 10 and guess what they did? Just that. Not only did they do that, they did the magenta and the cyan. They flipped them both. Of course, immediately calling. Your inks are terrible. This is my previous print. Look what I'm getting now. Uh, go back, the inks are not terrible. The inks are fantastic. You flip the colors accidentally. Your only option at this point is to flush out those cards unless you have a second set. To flush out the cards is actually quite easy on the Pro 10. Pro 10 is the best printer to get if you're going to refill. Better than the Pro 100. No modification required. Easy to refill, easy to flush if you have to. So what I would do is make an adapter, a flushing adapter, write me an email and I will show you what I'm talking about. You can do this in your own home and it's easy to do and very effective. You attach a syringe, you attach that clip to the cartridge and you pull back, remove the ink, toss it, it's now contaminated. You could either flush it with water or you can flush it with the actual correct ink. Just put about five ml in there, give it a good shake. There's an ink bag inside. Give it a good shake, pull that ink out and then put a full load of the real correct ink in it. You're good to go. The difference is gonna be in the fraction of 1%. So you'll be good. You'll never be able to tell the difference. Now, I just got a short excerpt here from an email from Mike from Precision Colors. And he talks just about this because I told him, I hope you straighten that guy out because he did send me the picture that the guy sent to him. And it's clearly that he screwed up royally. I know every refiller has screwed up at least once in their refill career. You don't want to learn these mistakes on a Pro 1000. Yeah, if you're gonna make that mistake, dear God, make it on the Pro 100 or the Pro 10. Not on this one. Good Lord, don't do that on this one. Another reason is to simply don't learn refilling on a Pro 1000. Don't do it until you really, really experience at this. I've said it before, I will keep repeating it. All of these stationary cart machines, this one, that one, that one, okay? And that one, and that one, and that one. They're all stationary cartridge printers. They are not good for beginners, not good. 
especially you guys and gals who want to immediately get into refilling. Consider not doing that. All of us will make mistakes and we will learn from them. Then we are careful. It's after we make the mistake. Then all of a sudden we're very careful. Avoid the mistake to begin with, okay? And avoid the huge headache. Small headaches, pro 10, pro 100. Huge headaches, pro 1, pro 1,000. And pro 2,000, even worse. And good Lord, what about the pro 4,000, 6,000? I don't even want to think about that. P800, that's enough of a headache by itself. So think very carefully about that. Babies always fall. I did not load film properly twice on my big trips. Came home disappointed and ashamed of myself. Yeah, he's talking about his camera with film back in the day. I will be posting. This is good now. Good news. At the end, we have some good news here. I will finally be posting the sublimation inks. I will offer the complete line in one fell swoop. All eight colors for Epsons. Oh, oh my mouth is watering already. Good Lord, I want to do that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I haven't read this. I swear to you, I have not read this until now. Blacks are the same, matte or photo. Okay, yeah, you don't care about matte in sublimation world. So addition of light cyan, light magenta, light black, and light, light black. And then the other colors, of course. Prefer doing that rather than dosing it bit by bit. Awesome. Great, great news for you sublimation types. Now, the next video, this is Friday evening. This is going to take the place of our Friday evening chit chat. Okay. Tomorrow, the 28th of July, we're at the end of the month already. Live stream. We can touch on this tomorrow in more detail. Get your questions ready, folks, please. Don't just sit there and listen to me blabbing. Have a ton of questions. I hope to see everybody tomorrow night, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, USA. And I think I will do my August live streams at 5 o'clock. Okay, that'll help the European folks, those of you in the U.K. and other Central Europe countries. You won't have to stay up so late for me. So that is great. I tried that for a while and see if that works. I'll let the Australian folks know that as well because that's going to affect them, especially on the West Coast. So thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like as always. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.